Okay, I'm seeing a, a radical equation, and I'm also seeing that there's, um, there is um, a fraction. So I'm going to clear the fraction, and to do that, I'm multiplying both sides by the LCD, or what some people might say cross-multiplication. Regardless, I get this over here. And then when you get on the right side, you would get root 3x plus 1 minus the root of 3x. All right? Now, by the way, someone says, what's the point of doing this? Is just, you know, maybe just looking at it and see what you come up with at this point. And if I did that, what would you get? You would get 3. I'm going to subtract this from both sides. The root of 3x plus 1. And then I'd get plus 5 root 3x equals 0. Now, by the way, someone says, you know, what are you going to do now? And certainly if I wasn't thinking, I would just isolate one of the radicals and square both sides. But i got to be honest with you, if I gave it a little bit of thought, which I'm going to suggest you do, by the way, there's no way this could be 0. The only way it could be 0 is if all 3x plus 1 is equal to 0 and... 3x is equal to 0, and that's simply not possible. But let's say you don't see that. What would you do? You'd isolate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, but there's no solution to this thing. There's absolutely no solution to that. Well, let's say you don't see that. You're just working forward. Well, the next thing I would do is isolate the radicals. What do you get? 3 root 3x plus 1 equals minus 5 root 3x. Well, again, if I were thinking, I would say there's no solution to that either because both sides would have to be simultaneously zero for that to be true, all right? But then let's say you're not thinking and you square both sides. What are you going to get? 9 times 3x plus 1 equals 25 times 3x. Not so bad. Let's write this down. And again, I'm not thinking, all right? If I were thinking, I would have stopped moments ago. What do you get? 27x plus 9 equals 75x. Then what? I guess I, I would take 27 from both, from both sides, right? So that's going to be 48x equals 9. And lo and behold, x, nice number, 9 over 48. I'm going to reduce that to 3 sixteenths, all right? So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that that's okay, 3 sixteenths. Now someone's going to say... You know, your work looks a little different over there. It, the key is it doesn't matter. I mean, I did a variety of different things, and one day I do one thing and do another. But I'll be honest with you, I would have stopped this problem at this stage over here. I wouldn't have went further. I said no solution to the problem, no real solution. I would have said that, no real solution. But you know what? Let's say you went forward, you got this answer over here. I'm going to say check it. And the problem with checking it, right, after all that work, problem with checking it for a lot of students it's going to be difficult to check, all right? But I do, I do have to do this. I have to do 3 times, you know, 16, uh, 3 sixteenths. So I have to, I have to, there's a couple things I have to do. I got 3x plus 1, and if x is equal to 3 sixteenths, right, that would be 9 sixteenths plus 16 sixteenths, which would be 25 sixteenths, all right? So I think I can do that. So what would you get over here? Well, if I just check it, you know, 25 sixteenths, the square root of that, would be five quarters, all right? Five quarters here, too. I'm just checking, by the way. Plus, well, if I did that, that's nine sixteenths, right? Because three x, if you know, if x is, is three sixteenths, nine sixteenths, and the square root of nine sixteenths is three quarters. What do you get on bottom? Minus three quarters. I'm just checking. What do you get there? Eight quarters. And what do you get on bottom? You would get two quarters. And what do you get there? Let's take a look at that. You would get, let's take a look at that. I multiply top and bottom by four, right? What do you get? Eight over four, which is two. Is that equal to a quarter? Absolutely not. There's no solution to the problem. No solution to the problem. All right? So again, you know, it happens to a lot of students, they, they say, you know, why did that occur? They write problems like this just to make sure that you, you know when to stop or where to stop, but more importantly, where to check. But I want to point out, 
I stop there, realizing that no solution over there. But again, wherever you stop, all right? Now, if you, if you want further than this, you'd square both sides. That would be 9. That would be 16 times 3x, right? Then you'd divide both sides by 16 times 3. You're going to get the same answer, by the way. And what would that give you at 3 16 So it's going to lead there. Unfortunately, leading there doesn't mean it's correct. Someone says, why is it not correct? Squaring both sides can introduce an extraneous solution. And we did it. Also, multiplying both sides by a non-zero term could also invalidate or introduce extraneous solutions. All right? A little bit tricky, though, wasn't it? Thank you for paying attention, though.